So I'm back with Paula Wilford, whose most recent book is Mediterranean Clay Pot Cooking. And we're in Rom, a wonderful cookware shop which specializes in clay pots in Sonoma, California. And Paul's going to tell us, what did you say about a Jewish in Moroccan dish? Yes. Because well, you're now working well, on a, a revised edition Moroccan. of your Moroccan classic book. Moroccan cookbook. Um, all over Europe, they have shalons. And in Morocco... Oh, cholent, what I call cholent. Okay. Yeah, shalon. So okay. It's also in Morocco known as Dathina or Skina. And it has to be brought to the oven on a Friday before sundown, and then some nice Moroccan man or boy will bring it to the home for lunch on Saturday. And I am making the dish just the way they made it in Marrakesh, in Larachi, in Asila, and in Tangier, all the years that I lived there. Because, it, the all, Jews, because the Jews came from 1492 yes, when they were expelled from Spain, this, they came to yes, North Africa. They would put some vegetables and bones in the bottom. They had different beans and little sacks of vegetables and different tastes, all done differently and all wrapped in cheesecloth, packed in here. Nothing is stirred because it's going off to the ovens. And at the top, hard, no, not hard, excuse me, eggs in the shell, raw, sitting all on top. Just enough room here, carry it to the oven, Gotta get somebody really strong to do it, and it's left in the ovens overnight, very low temperatures, like 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Brought the next day, and everything is perfectly cooked. Yet there is many, many different tastes. It's not all just one unilateral taste of you know just one thing. The meats are different. There's corn in there. There's uh, rice, and each one is flavored differently. And it's all in here, unwrapped and sacked around and, and placed around the big bowl. And the eggs, the eggs are cooked. The whites yeah. are creamy but and firm. Know, uh, and the yolks are creamy, but not runny, but so soft. They're not soft like soft boiled eggs. They're cooked, they're hard cooked, but they are beautiful and they have, have an infusion of the flavors that all the spices, the saffron and the ginger and the pepper and the garlic that all went through and stayed inside. Nowadays, I don't know what people do, well most of them have left for Israel, but it goes on. The Daphina lives. Uh, that's wonderful. Well, what you're really doing, it seems to me, in focusing so much on these clay pots is Really going back in time and well, tradition, um, keeping yeah, and and through food exploring the history of different peoples and what also I find well, very your touching too yeah well but what I find so touching is this whole sense of community that's created because first of all you're really making a big oh, dish yes. for a family to enjoy oh of course it's and then the as we mentioned earlier the ecological aspect of cooking it all in a communal oven I mean what could make more sense and because of the temperature it's so low now a lot of women in Morocco now have to, I forgot to mention this don't send it to the community oven anymore they have now an electric plate that's flat that is geared to 180 to 200 degrees they just place it on top and, and it cooks overnight. It, it has to be at least 10 hours. And when you see recipes for Daphina that are five hours or three hours, the meat isn't as good. Nothing, it, that, nothing changes. The, the meat doesn't fall apart. It just, it holds its texture. I mean, it's shape, but its texture becomes very, very soft and wonderful. The difference between something like this and the crock pot, which you'll say, oh, wait a minute, the crock pot will do it. No, the crock pot, the heat comes up the sides and everything steams and creates an enormous amount of water. But if it's bottom-up cooking, which is what happens in the communal ovens and in the home oven, the steam comes up, but not produced in the same rapid, fast way. And then it circulates. Some of it does get out a little bit and has somewhere to go because it's cool at the top and or it turns back to water and you have the texture of the vegetables they retain their shape 
even though it's been 12 or 15 hours, 18 hours. They're essentially almost steaming in their own, exactly. their own liquid. But, in their the, own. but the crock pot, the problem with the crock pot is that it, 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 it's, it's too much heat. The trouble with putting it in your home oven, and that's where that paper comes in. You really don't make this cover one. You just put parchment oh, you don't leave the cover in the oven if you're going to do it in the oh. oven. And the same, and I'll tell you why. Or you let it completely, because the heat is coming around the sides. It's creating too much heat, and it's the, the there's too much steam. steam. And that's why his mother used to put paper on top because it was more poor, there was more porosity with the pan and everything, and you didn't create the soup. You created brand brim, or in this case, adafina, masrina. Beautiful. Well, I wish you so much good success oh, with with clay pot cooking, which I think wonderful to see is too, right? timed. Oh, it's wonderful to see you as well. And uh, Paula actually gave a quote, a wonderful quote, when Cooking Under Pressure came out in 1989. Oh she was God, we'll a, so fan, a fan then and a wonderful promoter. And um, it's just wonderful to see you again. Yes, Thank you so much for talking with us. Oh, I'm delighted. I'm, this has just been very, very special. I'm glad to share it with you. Thank you.